Starting with Michael says, uh, good day all, good day, Michael. Gentlemen, a multi-part question. Why not? Let's let's do it. Could you delve into discussion of the net EMF or ELF or RF other damaging output to the body with EMF frequency devices like brain tap, alternative wearables to aura that measures uh, sleep insights wearables in general, and then the special math that people, uh, okay, there's, so there's several things in there. I guess you're looking for um, different wearables or tech that are not emitting the harmful EMFs to get started with. Um, I think that first I mentioned that the last masterclass we did was on safe therapeutic tech. So right there, you get two companies that actually uh, care about these things, Sauna Space and then Mito Red Light. And then also I'll mention that brain tap, I've personally measured it and the headset will turn off the Bluetooth if you use the wire inside, which is not always easy because you kind of have to get it right. You have to slightly unplug it, which was uh, an annoyance for me as a brain tap user. I've been using it for more than a year and I love the technology. It kind of knocks me in five minutes and really calms down my nervous system. And also Dr. Neil Nathan, who's uh, an expert in uh, electrosensitivity, uh, told me in an interview that BrainTap is, you know, one of the products that you might recommend clients that have this hyperactivity of the nervous system. And I've had that for years and it's gotten way better over the years, but I still see that. And maybe that's my caffeine consumption also that doesn't help. I know I should probably lessen it and but overall brain tap for me big benefits in the middle of the day it's kind of a a quick nap and it just knocks me in in another universe at times so very nice and it does not have this bluetooth signal all the time if you plug the wire in but it comes with it uh, at least that was my experience when i purchased one and then uh, as far as aura ring goes you can put it on airplane mode and i've uh, personally, um, put it on airplane mode since I've had it, I've had it for years, uh, the last generation and now the new generation, this is the latest model. And still I've measured it inside the Mercola tent <laughs> because I found true experience because I'm not the Brian Hoyer of this world. And I don't have all the tools. I found that many things that I thought were not emitting we're just emitting small Bluetooth signals at background levels in Montreal, which is quite noisy. So it was giving me the false impression of how things were behaving. So instead, I, I set up the Merkel up tent on my on my bed, and then I went inside and tested devices such as the brain tap, and I could have you know near zero read reading. So it was obvious even if the readings were quite low. So for Aura, you can put it on airplane mode, and it will store data locally all the time, which is nice. So it means that it's not emitting the Bluetooth. In the morning, I remove it, I put it on the charger, it automatically puts it uh, off of airplane mode, so Bluetooth mode, it will sync to your phone, and then you put it back on airplane mode and back on your, on your finger. So for me, uh, for sure, you're gonna have a little bit of exposure, uh, very small electric field, magnetic field, I don't doubt it. So if you're personally so electrosensitive that you cannot even have something battery powered, don't go with wearables, right? <laughs> you don't, you're, you're not at this level. For me, I think that this exposure is worth it. Personally, it has helped me track my sleep, but also be honest with myself. Okay, it's been seven nights that I'm sleeping less than seven hours. Come on, I need to, and sometimes I tell my wife, okay, I got to go to bed early and it kind of sucks going to bed early. It's not my favorite thing to do, but it has helped my life in that way. Um, Brian, as far as um, the second part of the question, now there's a lot of different things he mentions in there, including you know different mats that people can use, like the PMF mats. Have, have you measured those, like especially PMF? I really doubt that most of them have been shielded or... Uh, are even properly grounded. So there's probably secondary exposures, although there can be a primary benefit of the PEMF. So what's your yeah. experience in testing these? So they, the PEMF in particular, there's two types of PEMF. There's the ma magnetic PEMF devices, and then there's electric PEMF devices. So there's some devices that um, you're literally sitting on, and those are the magnetic 
PEMFs. And so they'll have pulsed magnetic fields that will register on our Gauss meter, but it's in, uh, it's in a frequency that's, that's, uh, tuned for a specific type of therapy. Now, um, some of the products mitigate, um, electric fields by default when they're running off of a battery. Like I know the Beamer, for instance, has a battery option. So if you're using that, you don't have electric field exposures, but you still, you only have basically just the therapy that's intended when you're using the battery. And that would go for any model of PEMF device, really like that, uh, in general, if they have a battery option, it's going to be most likely uh, no electric field exposure and only the therapeutic uh, pulsed waves that they intend to provide with the, with the product. Um, and then there's some other like far infrared mats and, and uh, devices like that with amethyst crystals and things like that. Those, those typically don't, prov don't give off a lot of magnetic field on the mat itself, but where the transformer is plugging into those mats that can be a problematic area within about a foot uh radius yeah so if your head's close to it that's not a good spot for your head you usually try to put your feet you know on that side and then the, the electric fields on those products are typically uh fairly high as well so um we're actually you know here here's a little update we're we're developing a product where you can basically just uh it's a sleeve like a grounded sleeve that you can put over those types of products and mitigate the electric field uh while still allowing the magnetic pulse to come through so that that product will specifically address the issue of um for the magnetic type of pemf devices Hey, this is Nick, the EMF guy, Pino. I am the co-creator of the EMF circle, along with my colleague, Brian Hoyer from Shielded Healing. What you saw today, this short video is a preview of the longer interview that we did for our circle members. Every month we have a masterclass like one of these or a Q and A session with me and Brian most of the time. So you get personal support and attention on your EMF reduction journey. So if you want to reduce EMF because you are personally sensitive or you're just trying to take precautionary measures to better your health and minimize the risk associated with wireless and other types of EMFs, then the EMF circle is the place to be. We have a ton of archives now. We have several months worth of Q and A's that you can listen back to. Everything is pre -record is recorded. You can either join live or just listen to the replay. So we have a cars master Masterclass. We have a pr free protection masterclass uh, uh, also that we did, and we're going to have several other masterclasses moving forward. So we hope that you join us inside the EMF circle. Just visit emfcircle.com or click the link under the video to join us. I hope to see you then.